Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I thought I would make a video um, for you today uh, because there have been a couple of new documents released by the Old Japan Kendo Federation uh, recently and some updates to some exi existing ones as well. Um, and it's something I've never talked about properly on video um, in sort of full, so I thought I'd like to talk about it a little bit um, in, in a bit more depth um, and hopefully help um, get this information out there a little bit because I think it's a little bit hidden on the way on, on the sort of All Japan Kendo Federation's website. It's not so easy to find. It's not heavily publicized. Uh, so I'd like to get, get it out there. Um, there's links to the documents that we're looking at in the description below. But essentially, I really want to help uh, the international community, of course, Kendo community, of course, understand the uh, the new interpretations of the rules or the way that we're supposed to apply the, the rules for Shi'ai, um, whether it's temporary or, or, or long-term. Um, and these documents are there to help us do that. So uh, that's the point of the video. We're going to jump to it in just a minute. Uh, but before we do, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You know the YouTube stuff. Uh, and most importantly, you can support me in my efforts to do these videos by shopping at kendostar.com. Kendostar.com is my website. So I, of course, would tell you how fantastic, brilliant and wonderful it is. But... Everyone agrees with me how amazing it is. You get brilliant Kendo equipment, the best. You get fantastic service, again, the best. And you get to support this channel as well. Everyone's a winner. So get to kendostar.com. Right, okay, so we all know what happened in early 2020. Things went strange, all right? And in order for Shi'ai to resume kendo matches, to resume uh, the rules are modified. Um, they're modified in, in various ways. Uh, I think some of these modifications are temporary and other th others of them are somewhat more permanent. I think there's some interesting uh, points that have, has, that's come from the whole thing. But what I do know is that lots of, uh, lots of us are really struggling with how these rules should be applied and interpreted Okay, so I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm expecting sort of you to understand a little bit of the Kendall rules in the first place. Okay, so <clears throat> if you, you know, it, it, one way to familiar, yeah, familiarize yourself with that is with this book, The Regulations uh, of Kendall and Shin, uh, Shiai and Shinpan and the Subsidiary Rules of Kendall, Shiai and Shinpan is available on kendallstar.com or from the Zen Kenen as well um and it's it's in english and japanese okay it's got all the rules in it all right um because what the documents we're looking at today are designed to be sort of applied or considered um in unison with this this book okay so that's the first point i'd make um second in terms of my uh my sort of background shall we say or my um the reason that i i care about this a lot i guess is um i was part of the um the european zone um shimpan seminar from the international kendo federation uh that was held in brussels that's also that also doubles as the selection um for referees the the selection seminar for referees for the european kendo Cham championships that will be happening in may in france uh, I was fortunate enough to be selected uh, as a shimpan, so I will be uh, acting as shimpan in the European Kendo Championships. Um, so yeah, uh, this is particularly important for me to understand this properly. Um, but I was able to obviously attend that seminar, hear directly from the senseis uh, exactly how these rules are, or these sort of uh, additions to the rules or notes on the rules uh, should be applied or interpret interpreted um and being luckily being able to understand japanese uh, i was able to um hear that in the in directly in japanese um so i, I i'm pretty confident um that, that i didn't lose much in translation the leader of the um the the seminar was koda sensei from um from at scuba university i think is a was his um his uh, original sort of the boss man at <laughs> very famous sensei called that sensei anyway uh, and he's basically been tasked uh with with um disseminating this information 
So let's start. What we'll do, we'll look at the first document. The first document is an outline of um, the sort of provisional rules um, that, that, that are in place. Uh, the second is a, a document um, that is uh, it's the Japanese version, but I did find an English version as well. Um, this is a, a kind of question, a Q&A or an FAQ uh, in relation to those. Uh, and then what I think we'll do is we'll we'll we maybe we'll maybe look at um, a little bit of some Shi'i footage so we can see how these rules are being applied, um, and we'll go from there, shall we? So um, at the top uh, it says the, the this is like updated on the first of April twenty twenty three, so just the other day. Um, provisional Shi'i and Shinban rules in place until the thing that I don't think. Like, I don't really want to say that out loud because uh, YouTube might down, like, you know, hide the video or something. It's brought under control. Um, All Japan Kennel Federation, Shi'ai and Shinpan Committee. Okay, so outline. One, adhere to stipulated guidelines to mit mitigate the spread of infection when running tournaments. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Uh, prevent illegitimate subzerii, intentional time wasting and approaching in a defensive posture. Uh, it is said... That until now, approximately half the match time is spent with Shiaisha locked in the Super ZDI position. This needs to be rectified so that matches uh, in matches, Shiaisha both take Kamai and attack each other. Attaining victory is an important element in Kendo matches, notwithstanding the way in which the Shiai is fought needs to be revised so that an attitude of competing head on um, against the opponent is cultivated in Shiaisha rather than skirting around the rules. As the attitude and mindset of the Shiaisha has a significant effect on Super ZDI, the situation is difficult to judge by the rules alone. Shiaisha and Shinbayin must share a common understanding and work together to foster a good match setting. So the, the idea here obviously is um, to allow them to run tournaments, um, you know, despite, you know, and, and mitigate the risk um, of infections. Uh, and I think this is the big, the, this is the big thing about it. Okay. Um, I think this is one of the big um, driving factors behind it is there's, there's, you know, they've been unhappy for a while, I think, with time wasting and Super ZDI and people using Super ZDI to, to play the clock. Um, and, you know, Kendo is, Kendo is supposed to be the method of self-improvement. Of course, victory is important in the Shi'ai. Um, but the overall goal, goal of Kendo is self-cultivation. So what they want is to create these... Um, they want the sort of focus of Shi'ai to be Shi'aisha really facing each other head on rather than trying to use the rules as much as they possibly can um, to sort of scrape through a victory. Um, the main points, points for both Shinban and Shi'aisha to understand are actions such as intentional time wasting or approaching the opponent in a defensive uh, posture, avoiding competing, and this is this is the key part of that one. All right, um, shall be deemed hand soccer in accordance with Article One of the regulations. So, Article One of the regulations, and this is this is key, and this was st stressed very much at the Shinban seminar. Is that Article One of the regulations? Yeah, Article One of the regulations is the um, the purpose of the regulations. The purpose of the regulations is to get Shiaisha to compete fairly in Shiai of the International Kendo Federation, FIK, in accordance with the principles of the sword and properly referee the Shi'ai without prejudice. Okay. Essentially, Article 1 is like the golden rule, which is, you know, in, in which way these, these rules should be interpreted or applied in that is everything happening in the interest of fairness and is it is it in happening in the context of the purpose of Kendall um, and our referees judging fairly okay um if super zeri uh that's why i say by the way that avoiding competing is the key part of that sentence right approaching the opponent in a defensive posture avoiding competing okay so it doesn't mean that it's hands off to block or to even to make the defensive posture it means to use a defensive posture to avoid competing okay like to waste the time to avoid the shorbut, okay? If Tsubuzeri Ayo close quarters contact is entered into, Shiaisha must actively perform a technique or separate quickly. Shiaisha need not wait for the Shinbain to call Wakare or Yame 
but should endeavor to separate on their own volition. All right. So you shouldn't hang around into the ZDI in order to, um, uh, you know, until the Shinban tell you to separate. You shouldn't do that. Okay. You should look to make a technique quickly or separate. The time taken to move out of Super ZDI should be approximately one breath, about three seconds. Okay. So you have about three seconds in Super ZDI. All right. So it doesn't mean get to Super ZDI either instantly do like the Hikiwaza. So man, man, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. You get man or whatever. Okay. Super ZDI. One, two, three, separate. Okay. Or get to Super ZDI. One, two, do. This is okay. Okay. But if it's like Super ZDI, one, two, three, four, this is, this is now a problem. Okay. <laughs> um, techniques should not be attempted when moving out of Super ZDI. If a technique, a technique is ex executed at such a time, it shall not be judged as a valid strike. You call that opposite. A Shi'ai Sha may be penalized, Hansoku, if in the course of separating they follow the other and attempt a technique or give the impression that they are moving back but then attack. Furthermore, in the course of separating, Shi'ai Sha must not hit, bind or push the opponent's Shinai, nor should they reverse cross their Shinai. Gyaku Kosa. Shinpain will make a judgment based on the circumstances uh, and causes following Gorgi. Okay, I'm not doing a very good job of highlighting the right text here, but you you, you get where I'm at. Okay, so this means that once you get to Super ZDI, you haven't made a technique, three seconds has passed. Okay, then you have to separate and you shouldn't start to separate and then hit. Okay, if you do that, it's not the Ippon. All right, if you start to separate and then hit, it's not the Ippon. If you st start to separate and then semi, like go as if to attack, that can be the hand soccer. Okay, that can be the hand soccer. If you pretend to go back, okay, let's go back and then hit, this is the hand soccer. Okay, when you're separating, you shouldn't hit the opponent's shinai or do the gakosa like this, like kind of defensive. When separating, both shiaisha should move back far enough so that their kensen are not touching. Okay, so you must separate to far distance. Do not open or lower the Kensen when separating. So don't just, you know, you should rem remain in the Kamae. Shiaisha should not retreat out of sync when moving away from Subzerii. Furthermore, Shiaisha should not separate in small steps. They should push off, utilizing the power generated from correct Subzerii with both Suba pressed together and retreat in one movement. And this is the thing that's, that's really seemed to be missed, all right? It should be Subzerii like this, one, two, three, super together, okay, yeah, <laughs> three, and separate, okay, not this sort of thing that you see, I've got some pens to demonstrate here, so here at super ZDI, one, two, three, separate, okay, separate, not this way, which is what you see a lot, which, where should we, so, yeah, so not one, two, three, like this, okay, it should be one, yeah, one, not, which is, is, which is why, this is, because people separate, separate, separate like this, this is why this sort of thing happens and someone gets hand soccer, yeah, because they're not separating properly. Okay, so you have to separate smoothly. Uh, wearing masks, so this is in Japan, okay, so this is, this is from the Zen Kenen, all right, so this is in Japan, all right, so obviously this is different in different regions, like in, for example, I'm in the UK right now, we don't have these rules, um, but wearing masks, Shiaisha should wear a mask or shield, uh, and the Shinpanning do not wear a mask, however, wearing a mask in the waiting area is at the discretion of the individual, okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's the way it is in Japan right now, okay. All right, so all these things, um, they seem pretty clear, but they're not very hard in practice in terms of like inter like proper interpretation and proper application. It's really, really difficult to, to keep on top of. Uh, and I, I think one of the things that does cause the biggest, not the biggest problem, but is the root of, of a lot of problems here is, you know, I often see someone will, will say to me, oh, well, we were separating and when we we're separating, they hit and they got the eep on why that happened or something like that. It's like, well, because you're sort of separating, like this kind of 
one, two, three sort of thing that seems to happen. It needs to be from here, this way, okay? This way. If this happens, they're not gonna be able to really hit you, okay? Because you've got to do it together. If they, if they do, if you start to, if you do that and they try to hit you and three seconds is gone, then, um, then they're not they're not gonna get the ippon. They shouldn't get the ippon, okay? Right. So let's have a look at this other document. So this one again, this is updated. Um, we'll we'll just go straight to the English one. I'll put the links again in the in the description and all that. So um, these are questions and explanations of the um, provisional Shi'i rules. So what we just looked at, okay? Um, from the All Japan Kendo Federation Shi'i and Shinpan Committee. So one, interpretation of the Shinpan rules. This operation is not to change the regulations of Kendo, Shi'ai, Shinpan, subsidiary rules of Kendo, Shi'ai, and Shinpan, uh, since the implementation of phase two, a uh, phrase two, sorry, about subsidiary or number three, interpretation and application of the regulations is highly effective in preventing uh, infectious diseases. The rule to be in uh, the rule is to be implemented with a uh, stricter interpretation of the rules. Okay, so what they're saying is they're not changing the rules. They haven't changed the rules necessarily. They've just decided, well, they're just encouraging, I guess, or they want the rules to be applied and interpreted on a strict, in a stricter manner. Okay, so the rule, the wording of the rules, this doesn't, this book doesn't need to change, but the way it's, the way it's interpreted needs to change a little bit. And that's what these these uh, these documents are for. So uh, questions and explanation about each case. So we've got the case on the left side and the explanation on the right. So number one, operation for the cases in which Shiites are separate by themselves near the boundary line. So what this is talking about is when um, the Shiites are in Subazeriai and it's right next to the edge of the Shiai jaw and separating like this might mean one has to go out of the Shiai jaw. So what are the points to be kept in mind for Shiaisha at the Sh and Shinbain uh, in the in operation for the cases of separating from Subazeriai near the boundary line? So um, what what do we need to keep in mind when this happens? So Shiaisha should not step out of the bounds. It's important that Sh uh, Shushin calls Yame immediately if a Shiaisha is about to step out of bounds for the purpose of disengaging Subazeriai. All right? So the shushing has to be on the ball. And if it looks like they're going to step out, just say yame because they, you know, they're, they, they would be stepping out because of the rules. Yeah. It's not like they're being careless. They have to separate, but there's no room. So the, sh the, shimp the shushing, shushing has to call yame. However, if the Shi'ai cha is out of bounds due to unavoidable, unavoidable circumstances, due to the operation of Shi'ai, the decision shall be made by Gorgi, considering the situation at the time. So what that means is that, having said that, it might be that the Shi'ai cha does go out of the bounds, does go out of the Shi'ai jaw through their own fault, yeah? Or, or through the actual general back and forth of the Shi'ai. Um, that means that the, the Shimpan have to use the tools at their disposal, Gorgi, that's the meeting, so that they can um, decide if it's appropriate toward Hansoku or not in this case. Uh, Shiaisha should coordinate themselves not to go out of bounds when separating. Uh, Shiaisha should not intentionally make the opponent step out of bounds. So it means you should, the Shiaisha should, they should know where they are in the Shiaijo and they should be able to position themselves so that they can both separate um, without going out of bounds. And that means that both the person who's likely to go out of bounds and the person who's the other side shouldn't intentionally make it in a position where they would go out of bounds, okay? It's important that the Shushin deals with it appropriately. Don't, unlock, uh, don't overlook any other unfair acts that may abuse this operational practice in the vicinity of the boundary line. So you have to be careful to watch the, the players aren't kind of trying to use the rules to get the other person to step out or or, or something like that, okay? As the Shiaisha, it means you have, to, you have to accept that if they're right in the corner and them going back would make them step out, you can't leave, you can't pin them in the corner in order to force them to go out if they step back because they have no choice but to step back, yeah? It's not like, of course you've got the three seconds, all right, you've got the three seconds, but if the three seconds elapse and that, that time has come where they have to separate, 
it's unfair of you to pin them in a position where they can't do that because then they're caught between a rock and a hard place and they're not allowed they're not allowed to step out of the the shiai jaw and also not allowed to stay in subazirii you can't force them into that position it's not fair okay um Operation for the cases Shiaisha separate with opening or lowering the Kensen. So what this is talking about is when they separate, yeah, let's say, they separate, but instead of separating smoothly in Kamai, they just go like this, yeah? Just release the Kamai and walk back or just lower it and walk back, yeah? Um, how should Shinbain determine the cases of Gakkota, reverse crossing, opening or lowering the Kensen um, when separating? So either... Like this, yeah. One just one just releases the camera and walks back. Or as they go back, they do the gak corsa and do this way. All right. They don't want you to do the gak corsa like this. All right. Uh, so it depends on the degree and frequency of the way of opening and lowering the shinai. If the act is repeated two or three times, or if it's intentional, shinbain apply hansoku after gorgi to determine the purchase uh, purpose and phenomenon. So uh, the views are not a translator. Uh, here, All right, because they've translated this word into phenomenon. Uh, it really means the situation. Okay, <laughs> all right. So um, it's uh, it's not so much that it's the um, phenomenon. Phenomenon. Uh, it's determined the purpose. So the purpose of the actual shiite. Why are they doing it? And the look at the whole the situation as a whole. All right. Um. And yeah, if it looks like someone's, again, in reference to Article 1, are they trying to be unfair? They hook in the shi Shinai to stop them doing any sort of hikiwaza before the time they've got time, or are they, you know, are they doing something that, that seems to be unfair um, and not in good spirit, you know, of, of, of sportsmanship? Uh, number three, kakegoe in close proximity. So kakegoe is shouting, all right? Lots of people call it kiai when you go, yeah, like this, it's called kakegoe. Okay, it's called kakegoe, it's not called kiai, but everyone calls it kiai, but it's called kakegoe, all right? Uh, how can Shinbain determine uh, when Shiaisha shout kakegoe in a close uh, situation? So, um, again, this is this has come up through an auto-translator. I know this because I've also translated this document myself. Um, I, did, I, I, I translated it myself, uh, <laughs> my own version, and then I found there was an English version. Well, already. <laughs> but anyway, um, so it, in, in terms of, like, it doesn't mean how can they determine when they shout. It means what should they do when they shout in close proximity. Obviously, they can determine if they shout or not because you can hear a shout. Yeah. So um, what it means is what should the shimpan do when the Shiaisha does the kakegoe in, in the close situation in Subazeriye. So it's vital for droplet prevention in terms of preventing infections. The Shinbain stop the Shiai and give instruction if the kakegoe seems to be unconscious. Uh, if it's repeated after the instruction, the Hansok will be applied after Gorgi. So if it appears that the, the kakegoe is just like unconscious, like unintentional like automatic as you sometimes do you get the bah, yeah oh didn't mean to do that sort of thing um then the shim the shushin will stop and say to the shiaisha please don't do that okay and then if they keep doing it after that gorgi hands off uh but you have to do gorgi Expl explanation about hansoku if hansoku is applied is an explanation required to the shiaisha and any points to keep in mind when doing so? If an explanation of Hansoku is deemed necessary, Article 37 of the regulations shall be applied after Gorgi and the explanation may be given. In such a case, it should be clearly explained with gestures and the like so that the shiaisha and spectators can understand. Okay, so... Um, the, the key here is it's not saying you have to explain why you're doing the Hansoku, but if you feel, or the if the Shimpan feel that it is necessary to explain, perhaps in order to, you know, because especially some of these are, you know, like the idea of them is, is to prevent infections and stuff like that. Um, it's important 
sometimes to think, well, we better tell them so that they don't keep doing it and increase that risk, for example. Or maybe it's dangerous for some other reason, whatever. Um, but if you feel like that, that if the shimpan feel like an explanation is required, then they give the explanation and it should be clear and potentially even gestures should be given so that even people outside can understand why you're giving the hand soccer, right? Because that's that's quite important as well in, in such a case where it's unclear. Um, number five, about the points to determine when Subazeti I is resolved. Uh, what should the Shimpain keep in mind when determining when Subazeti I is resolved? So the time taken to, this could be interesting because I think that, let's see what happens. We've got that word phenomenon in there again. Uh, the time taken to cease Subazeti I should be approximately one breath, so about three seconds. When resolving Subazeti I, both Shi Aisha should pu push off utilizing the power generated from correct Subazeti I with both Suba pressed together to retreat in one movement. There are times when Shi Aisha, who have lost the first Ippon, moves back quickly on his own, uh, or a player who has gained the Ippon first attacks, uh, first takes as much time as possible to separate. All right? So, first off, what that means is, um, I can tell they've used a, a translator here because again, they've used so, sort of gendered language, which they probably shouldn't do. Um, but um, anyway, uh, <laughs> the, um, the so this time. So first off, it's saying about that separation. You should you should separate, push against each other tuba, and separate in unison smoothly in one smooth motion. Also, often it'll happen where this person has lost the Ippon. So as soon as they get to the they want to separate so that they can have a chance to hit another, you know, you know, score one back. Um, and sometimes it's the case that the the um, the person that made the Ippon, so is one point up, will try to stay in Tsubazari as long as possible so that they can use as much as the time of the Shi'ai um, in the hope that the clock runs out and they win. In general, there's a tendency to treat the Shi'ai who takes the first uh, who takes the first deep bond as a foul for wasting time. But comprehensive judgment should be made based on careful assessment of the objective and the phenomenon, again, is there. It doesn't mean phenomenon, it means the situation, all right? So, um, so it's it, in general, it, it's usually the case that the person who has got the deep bond is wasting time in the subsidiary because they want to play the clock and it's it's there's a tendency to award the hand soccer for those reasons to that player but what they're saying is although that's usually the case you have you can't just take that for granted and you should make that decision based off the full judgment of the situation um and the objective ob objective facts okay and there's a little point saying the rationale for the one breath of three seconds guideline, the resting respiratory rate of an adult is about 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Based on this, it's assumed that one breath is about three seconds, all right? I don't, I don't think they necessarily needed to put that in there, but I guess in case somebody was asking why. Okay, uh, do not strike while both Shiaisha are trying to separate. Uh, so this is a bit awkward because it's, um, it's kind of... The formatting has gone weird uh, and they haven't separated the two um to uh the two boxes at the bottom there um so i'm going to try and figure out uh anyway let's read let's read it says what's the best way to handle the situation when what is performed in the middle of a, a mutual attempt to separate and what are the operational points to keep in mind and the second question in the same box says how should Shinpain determine if Hikiwaza is Yuko Datotsu when separating from Tsubuzeriai especially if it's after one breath so Tsubuzeriai represents the closest and tensest point between two opponents when they enter qu close quarters tussle with the Tsuba uh, joined together so it's important for both Shi Aisha to remain attentive yeah so it means that they can't just relax and you know, be like, okay, well, no problem. They, I can't lose the Hikiwaza because the rules have changed. You can't think like that, okay? Strike while both uh, Shiaisha are separating after what I think it means a strike or striking at while both Shiaisha are separating after one breath, about three seconds of Subzeriai, will not be considered you call that otter, all right? So if three seconds has passed and then you start to separate and one player makes a strike, that strike will not be considered valid, okay? Further, a hand soccer will be applied by Gorgi when the waza is clearly made to look like to separate. So if you 
like was faking it. Okay, let's separate. Let's separate. Obviously, if you speak, that's how I'm talking. But I don't mean speaking. But you know, if, if you like, okay, like this, and then bam, he kills her. Then um, they're gonna give you a hand sucker for that. Okay, because it's cheating, All right? Uh, in any case, there's a sort of situation where uh, where there was this performed during the separate process of separation or within the the three seconds of contact. It's appropriate not to declare the striking Shiaisha as Han Soku and not to award uh, you called Datotsu. So sometimes it's the case, what they're saying is it's not either, like, because there's a big, not a big, but I think lots of people confused about this. And like, this was a comment on my last Kendall rant too. Um, but it's not either or all. It's not like, okay, it's either Ippon or Han Soku. It's not that. The mid ground is the most common, which is it's neither. Okay, so it's it's usually neither ippon or neither hansok neither or, or hansoku. So it's not ippon and not hansoku. It's usually the most common one. All right, when it's during the process of separating, because it just means that one of the players has kind of mis misinterpreted the timing slightly. If it's not done maliciously or like you know, it again, it all comes down to that article one about the application of fairness. Um, a judgment should be made by Gorgi based on the assessment of objective, of the objective and the phenomenon. <laughs> so, so the phenomenon. it's not the phenomenon, it's the, the situation, all right? So the, the, go, the Gorgi, a Gorgi should happen. So if they're unclear, they make Gorgi, all right? Was this hand soccer? And you only make the Gorgi if you think there's going to be a hand soccer. It doesn't mean, okay, so they're starting to separate. Three seconds is about up. They're starting to separate and one one doesn't realize it's up yet for them. Because let's let look, one's counting one, two, three, and the other's counting one, two, three. Okay. So there's gonna be some kind of you know gap there. All right. So one's counting, they start to separate, bam, one does a hikiwaza. Most common time, that's just not gonna be awarded and it's not gonna um it's not gonna be given hand soccer. All right. It might be though that after Two seconds, one does a hikiwaza. And this one, maybe one s sort of starts to separate and they do the hikiwaza within the three seconds. That can still be considered valid, all right? But what you can't do is you can't start to separate as well. Start, you know, engage in this mutual separation. The separation has to be mutual, yeah? And then do the hikiwaza, all right? Or do the attacking, you know, uh, senate, stuff like that. Um, the time from Tsubazei to perform waza within one breath uh, is one breath. Okay, I know this is I know this is like sounds kind of vague and it's sort of intentionally vague. But the shimpan have to uh, use their experience um, to 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 judge this and whether it's and the big question is whether it comes back to Article One. Is it happening in the interest of fairness or not, or is somebody abusing the rules here? Okay. Um, for more information on how to recognize the timing, and, and at the end of the day, sorry, before I just go on, at the end of the day, each referee is going to interpret this slightly differently, all right? And that's why there's three referees, all right? So my interpretation of when it's fair to make the Ippon and the other two referees' interpretation could be very different, all right? But if we all agree, then we all agree, yeah? So it's not right either for, for a Shiaisha to complain afterwards, well, we were separating, why was I given the Ippon? It's like, well, because your interpretation of when it's fair to make the Hikiwaza is different to when, what the 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 Shimpan's interpretation of what that is, right? And that is, that's the way the game works, yeah? And at the end of the day, it's the Shimpan's judgment, not the Shiaisha's judgment, okay? So that's the, the thing you have to do. As a Shiaisha, the best thing you, you can do is try to, the, the best thing as a shi well the best as a shimpan the best thing you can do is try to um try to have the fairest and most correct judgment as possible and as a shiisha the best thing you can do is try to um align your understanding uh, of those judgments with the shimpan as much as possible uh, for more information on how to recognize the timing and opportunity for hikiwaza from subzeri please refer to basics 
for hikiwaza in training method for fundamental kendo techniques of the bokto. This isn't in the Japanese version. Why have they put that in? <laughs> I don't think they wrote that in the, the Japanese version. No, it's not in there. Um, it's... Uh, Okay, anyway, <laughs> so they're saying that he, if you think about how uh, the, the timing of Hikiwaza from um, the Bokuto Nyoru Kihonwaza Keikoho, uh, number four, uh, it will give you a, a clue. Uh, in principle, Fukushin may not call Gogi to determine whether a Hikiwaza, which has been performed when separating from Subzerai, is within one breath or after it falls, or after, as it falls under the exclusive authority of the Shushin who is tasked with conducting the Shiai. So this is another thing that's missed often. In principle, the Hukushin cannot call Yame or Gogi, okay? They can only call uh, Yame um, and, uh, and or ask for Gogi in very certain situations. One is if the clock has gone and the Shushin hasn't heard it. Uh, one is if a objective Hansoku has occurred and the Shushin has missed it. And an objective, an objective hansoku is something like stepping out of the shiai jo, dropping the shinai, touching the shinai, touching the opponent, speaking. It's not a subjective uh, hansoku, which is requires the judgment of the 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 the, the shushin, uh, um, shinpan, such as has it been three seconds or not? Has it been about three seconds or not? It, was this fair or not? Is this a little bit too rough or not? These sort of things. Uh, you know, have, have they been in Super I too long or not? These sort of things are exclusively for the sh uh, Shushin to uh, decide whether it's time to ask the opinion of the other uh, Shinpan, right? That's the authority the Shushin has in, diff you know, uh, in contrast to the, the Hukushin. Uh, it's vital that the Shushin uses their discretion to make an appropriate decision and that the three Shinpan have unity and purposes and uh, unity of purpose and cooperation. So what it means is, so it's really important that the Shushin makes the appropriate judgment in such case, because you're the, you know, the Shushin is the only one with that authority. Okay, so they must be um, on the ball and they must be ready to use their discretion and they must be on the same page as the other sh Shinpan. Okay, they must be acting in unison. So it must, it, it, you know, in the best, in the ideal situation, they would call the Gorgi at the same point that the Hukushin would if they could anyway. Okay. Uh, Shushin call, shall call Yame after one breath and award Hansoku, um, three seconds that is, or call Wakare in case uh, Tsubuzeriai has come to a stalemate. All right. So if the Tsubuzeriai lasts for more than three seconds and it's a stalemate, They've got two choices. They can call Yame, call Gogi and award Hansoku, or they can call Wakare, all right? And ask the players to separate. Calling Wakare is only for when both Shiaisha are in proper Tsubuzeriai position. So what this means, and if you read the Japanese version, it means that by calling Wakare, you are, the, the, it's it, it's done under the assumption that both of the Shiai, Shiaisha are doing Tsubuzeriai properly and neither of them are wasting time, neither of them are doing anything wrong, okay? So essentially, by calling Wakare, that is what you're kind of saying, not saying, but that is what you, be, you are demonstrating is your judgment is that neither player is wrong, they should just separate, okay? Um, it's just an unfortunate accident. Uh, basically, there are only a limited number of situations in which stalemated subzeriai can be observed. So avoid frequent wakare calls. So what they're saying is, shouldn't happen all that much. Because often, often, one side is at fault. Okay, one side is at fault. Uh, in addition, both shiaisha should not easily be, not be easily given hansoku. So this isn't a great translation of what the Japanese says. Um... The um, Yosha Hansoku ni Shinai. So you shouldn't easily give Hansoku to both players. When it says both players, it means simultaneously. Okay? It's possible to give uh, Hansoku to both. So if you think both players are wasting time, it is possible to give to both players at the same time. Okay? Um, but they don't really want you to do that very much. All right? Because usually one one is worse than the other. Okay, they want you to make that judgment call. Okay, <clears throat> so 
So I think the key points in this, a couple of things. First off, you don't just dish out hand soccer left, right and centre if, um, first off, if they block, because it says they've got to be not engaging in the Shi'ai. You don't just dish it out if they just do a hikiwaza um, whilst they're separating, unless they've also demonstrated to separate and look like they're trying to trick the other person, all right? They're not, they're not trying to increase the number of hansoku that are given out, all right? They're not trying to do that. What they're trying to do is try to encourage Kendall that's fair and um, and honest, okay? So what they're trying to do is they're, they're giving the Shinban tools to help encourage that. One of those tools is hansoku, and it's not the only tool you've got, and it's not the one you should be just throwing out all over the place, but there are times, as discussed in here, where it is appropriate to do so, all right? So things like lowering the Shinai as they move back from Tsubazeriai, okay? It says, it depends on how bad it is. And if it's repeated two or three times, and it's obviously intentional, like, oh, kind of thing, <laughs> um, then you can apply Hansel Good. But if they just kind of drop their Kensen slightly as they move back on the first time, you don't just suddenly start flinging out hand soccer all over the place. Okay? Is the kind of thing the same. Now, um, what we'll do to wrap up the video, because uh, I know I've been going on quite a while, um, I do think it's super important though, and I think it's important both for referees and for Shiaisha to kind of get an understanding of how these rules are supposed to be applied. All right? Um, I do think it's worth everybody looking at these, um, both, both parts. Um, and yeah, let's, let's have a look at a video from the Japanese Shiai now and we can see how they're applied uh, and then we'll wrap up. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I pulled up a video from, um, the, uh, the last All Japan Championships. All right. So it's, it, it's actually, it's already a little bit outdated because a couple of things have changed a little bit, uh, since, um, since uh since this this happened uh for example the uh the the shimpan are wearing masks still and now they're saying that they don't wear the masks so it's a little bit different but it's not uh, i don't think it'll be a bad example uh the match is between uh sho ando and uh hiroharu kamosaki um from the second round of the tournament uh i, I thought this would be a good one obviously and ando tenshi is a very very uh accomplished player uh, for a start, but also uh, Yamamura Sensei is, is the Shishin here. Now, Yamamura Sensei was one of the sh uh, Senseis that came and assisted Koda Sensei at the seminar. Um, so he was another one of the Senseis that was teaching us at the seminar that I was present at. So I thought it'd be really appropriate because um, it does sort of feature him. All right, so uh, what we're particularly looking at here, I'm not really looking at Ippons and stuff like that. I'm looking about how the players interact with each other with regards to Tsubazeriai and, and the other rules that we just talked about. And also um, with regards to um, how the Shinban perhaps conduct things. I haven't pre-watched this. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to go down, but we'll, 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 we'll have a look. All right, we'll turn it down a little bit. Okay, so see, here we go, right? See, see what I said about the blocking? This isn't Hansoku. This isn't Hansoku. All right, because they're both engaging in the Shi'ai still. It's not. They're not trying to just play the clock or avoid doing Shi'ai with each other. Yeah, they're just mitigating the risk of being struck. They have to try and win. Yeah, it's not Hansoku to block. Okay, so that's the first key point, as can be demonstrated. Okay, so after they reach to the what have we got here? We've got. One, two, and they start to separate after a couple of seconds, okay? And they mutually separate, okay? Mutually. To the far distance, okay? Same sort of situation. Yeah, they're both separating, okay? And it's a smooth separation. It's not this kind of slow motion sort of separation that's going on, yeah? So they're both, both looking for the opportunity, but if there isn't one, they straight away return, <coughs> return to Chudan. All right, and the Chimban aren't just looking, looking to try and dish out Hansoku either. Yeah, they're looking, is this match fair? Is what's happening here how, you know, how it's supposed to be? 
And I'd really urge anyone that's participating both in Shi'ai and as Shimpan, okay, is, is to watch videos like this because these are the examples that we have of what we are to follow, all right? Especially the Shimpan, okay? These are the Shimpan that, that are acting as the examples for us to follow. So if we're unsure in any way how we're supposed to interpret these rules, we can watch here for an example of how it's supposed to be, okay? That's definitely worth bearing in mind. Yeah, so again, there is a time at Super Zedii that they're allowed to use to try and make a strike, but if it's not there, then they, they just separate, okay? Simple, yeah? I know, it, I know it seems kind of difficult. I know it is, and it's difficult, it's just new for a lot of us. We see how even when they come to this sort of weird situation here, yeah, but they've both started to separate, so they take that extra step to make sure they separate to this Torma. You must separate to Torma, okay, the far distance of the Shinai aren't touching. Yeah, but it, it's in any way, it's not like um, kind of spoiled the match or the flow of the match. Both players are still able to compete with each other and look for opportunities to strike. Both, both, you know, um, in, in Super Zeriai and from the normal distance. Yeah? I, I don't think there's going to be any sort of hand soccer, hand soccer or anything awarded. Oh, you cracked the pen. <laughs> I'm not here to look at the, uh, the eight ones, but... Um, Anyway, okay, so I think that's a good example, but if you if you go and watch any of the others, um, again, this is on the All Japan Kendo Federation's channel, by the way, this is where this video is from, but you can see these rules are being respected by the players and applied by the Shimpan, okay? Um, I think it's a, I, I think it's a really important topic. I know it's been a long video. Um, I do Kendo Rant every week. I do a weekly video where I answer questions from, from the viewers. Um, the best place to post questions is either in the comments um, or, um, you can post them on the thread that I start every week in the Kendo Show Early Access group in Facebook. There's a link in the description. Um, and if you've got any questions about this sort of thing, that's a, a great place to post them. Um, and and I'll, I'll come back to you uh, in Kendo Rant. But that's it. I know it's a long one. Thank, thank you for joining me. I hope it was useful. Um, I, I do really think it's an important topic. Um, and yeah, share it with whoever you think needs to see it. Um, thank you for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, shop at Kendo Star, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.